team ban. <sighs> Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. <sighs> Dire team pick. Monkey King. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds rem Clockwork. Radiant team pick. Earth Shaker. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Imba Spirit. Radiant Team Ban. <laughs> Dire Team Ban. <laughs> Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Radiant team pick. <clears throat> yeah, Milan's Earthshaker quickly becoming one of their kind of signature picks where he'll pull, he'll control Ten lanes, he'll be that remaining. hidden force, always ready to save people if they're in trouble. Um, Five seconds and he, he always seems to find his blink in arcanes at reasonably good times. You know, he, he never kind of Reserve drags his time. feet and and is massively underfarmed. He's very good at kind of finding his niche in the game. I like this opening from PD. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't give away their overall game plan. They've got little sort of fundamentals that they'll be going along with. And now with the Invoker, they've got even more catch and kill with Clockwork Cogs into Sunstrike, as well as Fisher Sunstrike. Um, it's, it's a very solid, stable opening. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. You definitely have the option there. Um, Ember Spirit safe lane hasn't been incredibly popular of late, but if there's anyone to take like a mid lane hero to the safe lane or vice versa, it's Era. You know, he's played both roles very effectively, and he was always that one player that would, you know, pick SF or take a Viper, you know, take kind of unconventional heroes for his team towards the mid lane or take mid heroes to the safe lane like he used to be an alchemist. Uh, with Ember Spirit, though, you kind of want to stay mid just because, like, the angles of engagement are kind of wider there, and you do have ways to escape through Flame Guard and Searing Chains. You've got lots of plays to make, and if you have a Monkey King, it's not that 1v1 matchup, right? You're not going to get slammed by an invoker using four spirits and just blasting you with a sunstrike. You will have some kind of help there and some kind of rune control as well. Yeah. Windranger at your service. Radiant team pick.
There's a there's a chance. Whenever Wind Ranger is picked, there is a chance Ten that it's thrown mid. Remain. We very very rarely see you know off lane Wind Ranger. Safe lane Wind Ranger is not a thing. Five it's more consistently remain. in that support role, like you were talking about. You know, crit for EG and puppy more recently for Secret. Uh, started time. doing this support Wind Ranger with the kind of max shackle, uh, having Wind Run as your maneuverability and then some form of a nuke. You know, your your power shot. Uh, but in this game against two melee cores like Clockwork and Earthshaker, you know, trapping them and finding two man shackles shouldn't be too difficult and you're also a pretty nice setup or can be set up for through monkey king's boundless strike as well as searing chains from ember spirit so it's not incredibly difficult to go for Disruptor. tackles this game but pd just continues you know Dying. their ca their catch and kill philosophy basically disruptor enables the glimpse back into sunstrike uh, allows clockwork to be a lot more aggressive can defend tier one towers relatively easily I don't know if this is an indication of what kind of one role hero they want to go for, because with Disruptor Ten recently, we've seen a lot remaining. more of the Ursa Warrior, you know, coming out from what VP were playing at the Kiev Major. They were just going remaining. Disruptor Ursa, like every single game, making sure that he was never kited. I feel this is more Reserve like a, time. hey, they have Ember, they have Wind Ranger, squishy, kind of mobile heroes. Uh, Thunderstrike gives vision of Monkey King, you know, it's a catch-all hero, pretty much, and a nice pick for PD. Legion Commander! Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds <clears throat> remaining. Dire Team Ban. I think you, yeah, I think you can Dying solve it with your last pick. pick. Again, there's, there's the Ursa ban from MIP, kind of understanding that Disrupt Ursa have been such a, a rampant and strong combo in the past couple of weeks that you just don't want to give it over. But they have, like, PD disruption and ways to... Ten seconds remaining. Don't know if you want to go for an... Go and just say, right, we'll, we'll double down remaining. on this and we'll make sure that MIP can... Reserve time. Them does well against the Ember and the Legion by Lincoln Sphere to kill or 10 seconds remaining wouldn't Lycan. be that awful either maybe now they would be against Radiant the Lycan I, I retract Re my statement has been redacted you don't really want to be picking those heroes in such an early uh, against such an early pressure hero I think Slark is like their best shot. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Your biggest fear is being stomped by a Legion commander with a four man shield. So I, I think that's your laning problems oh, first. God. Yeah, okay, there we go. So they, they've, they've got someone who does well against the Legion, they've got the blind against Lycan. Mm, there's a big reason why, you know, one roll camp for me. It's that he doesn't want to buy an early BKB. He doesn't buy lots of stats early. He goes for like Vlad's Manta style, Shadow Blade. Ember Spirit, Wind Ranger, Legion have so much damage behind them, magic damage as well, that Troll could find himself struggling a lot in the mid game unless he goes for that early BKB. Yeah. And this actually gives a little bit more credence to the idea of this being an aggressive pro Dota gaming draft that they could be the ones who are on the aggressive constantly, particularly if Milan gets off all those pulls that he's well known for. Um, obviously, we saw him the other day in Dream League, who we've been seeing him the entire Ten time that uh, at Pro Dota has been playing in uh, Mr. Cat here. So Five I'm expecting big remaining. things. I, I think that Troll also solves the laning problems that you were talking about, at least to some degree. You mentioned that a lot as something that they needed to make sure worked well for them. Um, but is Monkey King going to be that X factor? Is he going to be the one that that like can disrupt that offlane and make it a little bit easier for the Legion Commander? Or do you think that he's going to be focused on trying to disrupt the Earthshaker pulls? 
that's the thing, right? There are so many areas that he has to look towards. Uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was like Yol Slada or something that was disrupting Milan in the last game that PD right. ran this. And oh, it was Ricky. It was Ricky, right? And he watered the camp and he did so much and he you know, stopped it from happening. But Milan still found a way to be active and still found a way to you know get his golden experience. And he drew all of that aggro away. So if, if Honey's Monkey King gets drawn and sucked into that area of the map where Milan is doing something good, but not something game winning, then Hani could be losing a lot more effectiveness in the other lanes. So it's it's hard to say what Hani aims to do, but I think if he goes, you know, mid or bot lane, or even just secures his safe lane, you know, keep away from the Earthshaker. It's, it's a waste of time. Okay. Prepare for battle. Well, take what you can get. Lycan is also a hero that can head off to the jungle if he needs to, to get some farming in just in case there are those uh, early pulls. This is going to be a interesting ward place down. We'll scout out some good vision of the area where rotations might come from, I guess, but um, it doesn't get a ton of vision of, like, the inside part of the lane. I guess wraparounds are there. Uh, the, the biggest reason for this ward is when offlaners come to leech experience from this camp, you know, they stand down here, so you'll have full vision of them, so you know when to initiate or go in. Um, but it also gives, you know, a little bit of vision over on these areas here where... Uh, Offlane is likely to move back to their shrine. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks, Toby. Appreciate it. To battle. Uh, the real Toby Wan just stood up. Jeez, yeah, it, it, it's also a very safe ward to place. You know, you don't go into vision range of any enemies. It is just going to be there. It gives you a bit of vision. It makes sure that you have a ward that's not going to be dewarded. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, there's some more vision that's over here. They know that Monkey King is going to come in and try and... Uh, well, it could come in and contest the pulls, but you're seeing that he's actually heading out towards mid at least to start begins. to make sure that he gets a good block off on all of these creeps. Has the Orb of Venom already picked up now? So do you think that they can come and try and punish the lone disruptor here in this safe lane? It is not the greatest hero being able to zone people out. Oh, definitely. Like, this bot lane is where Hani's, you know, bread and butter is. There's a lone support that does very little at level one, is more of a, you know, level seven plus support. Uh, is okay as a laning support in, you know, 2v1s or 3v1s where you can thunder strike, zone, stack, pull, and get everything done at the same time. But when you are on the back foot against a Monkey King and a Legion Commander who just punch you, just punch you nonstop, then Disruptor is you know, not a hero. And that's where Garter is going to find most of his struggles is being in a, a 1v1 against Legion while his support's in a 1v1 against Hani's Monkey King. Because that's kind of how these lanes devolve, right? You look at them and it's, okay, 1 plus 1 versus 1 plus 1 is 2 versus 2. But that's not how it works. It's much more, much more spread out than that. Yeah. Well, and they're already going to start to do a little bit of damage here on the Trixie, but if he's not careful, he might just end up going down. They have the Boundless Strike, the slow is there. The extra movement speed as well by Trixie, and J4 in trouble now, but will be able to make his retreat all the way back, I do believe, as Troll Warlord... Still made it up and pushing Trixie back himself. Garter could pass over and hand over his uh, salve if he wants, but not sure if that's going to happen. As Milan will be able to find the creep pull, gets the second one as well. Lycan nice. is going to be hampered in. That's big for Milan. Actually, getting the connection pull as well is very important for him. But yeah, you see bot lane. You know, they just group up on the disruptor, and Garter is left there to CS and last hit, which you know, he's doing a very good job of. But it's the fact that J4 is. Basically, at this point, just a damage sink. All he needs now is HP regen and to buy boots to try and run the hell away from his opponents. Right. I wonder if maybe he even end up seeing pretty soon here. Uh, Milan, think about going in. It, it, it feels like it's not. It's going to be hard for Earthshaker to get anything done there. Uh, but he does still have another minute before the camps respawn. Instead, he's going to go in and secure a bounty rune. This is actually going to be a really efficient movement here for Milan. Being able to get the full pull off on both of those camps, then also get both bounty runes. Earthshaker's having a really good time with this game. He's even contesting the pull of his opponents. Like this is how this is how fearless he feels with Monkey King on the bot lane. Uh, also looking towards the mid lane, Kaiser on this invoker against the Boxy Ember Spirit. Relatively even in CS, but this is because Boxy has quite an unusual build. Double Fairy Fire brings himself a salve late, but with a poor man shield and quelling blade, he's able to CS and play aggressively into the invoker, which he's been doing so whenever he can. Just like spamming Searing Chains and Flame Guard, even at level two. Oh, and you also see that. 
It's the Invoker now who's getting sort of hemmed in here in a second by Hani. They thought about going in for a moment, and now they are going to. Alacrity has been invoked, and hard for them to find this kill. They actually whip a little bit on the Battle of Strike. Sunstrike comes in as well, trying to bring down Boxy with the damage coming in from the tower. It looks like it's not going to be enough. That Fairy Fire paying off, but oh my god! Earthshaker puts the kibosh on it. Guess who turns up? Guess who's in the right place at the right time? If he'd been there maybe, you know, three, four seconds earlier, he turns that fight around and Kaiser survives. But unfortunately, no TP for Milan. But three minutes, Arcane Boots, Invoker dying first blood. That's no big deal. You can deal with it. You can live with this. This is fine. Garter's getting good trades on Tricks and Bot lane because the monkey can just move. And this brings us, you know, all us full circle to one of the original points that you made during the draft. With so many things for Hani to focus on, where does he go? Where, yeah. where is the most efficient play to be had? If he goes bot lane, sure, you pressure the safe lane, but that opens up mid lane, opens up the safe lane, opens up Milan to do all these stacks and pulls and uh, allows for other things. And so far, Hani has found a, you know, a decent balance between bot and mid. But I do right. wonder if they're losing out too much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and, and also now, like with Milan already having a good time, Clockwork's lane is basically free at this point. Maybe he can move in and try and make some play here against Boxy. Kaiser is getting ran down. Sunstrike is there. Well, a little bit off the mark, but they have brought in the Disruptor. No glimpse as of yet, but I don't think it's going to be needed. Well, there's going to be another catch. And Kaiser actually might be going down here. J4 had not gotten that body block off. He's still taking some more damage. Milan, they get a double kill from Hani. Two for one. That's a pretty nice little surprise there. What a hero. Cool. <laughs> I mean, who else has like 3,000 extended initiation range to do damage like that, honestly? He jumps from river to tree to boundless strike. Oh, that is, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, really nicely lined up by Hani there to actually get both of the kills with the one spell. Good TP and turnaround from Trixie to heal and dispel the cold snap from Boxy. But it has to be said, PD kind of misplayed the start of that fight, you know, missing out on a couple of big spells. They didn't yep. land enough damage onto Ember Spirit to kill him off uh, fast enough. And that just extended things out and allowed NIP to react and reinitiate. Well, it's a thousand gold lead for NIP. The times where they were getting very efficient usage out of the map is kind of a, a little bit behind him now. We haven't seen any more of those offlane pulls. Milan feeling like he needs to get involved and, well, they might just do it right here. Boxy is just dead. That was interesting. I guess just not used to playing around the Earthshaker? I mean, you can't ever get used to it, right? This is one of the things that Earthshaker has always excelled at, was initiating in from Fog. We used to see it a lot when Storm Spirit was very uh, sort of high up in the meta in, sort of, in terms of pick priority and pick order. When Storm was very strong, there were so few heroes that could reliably you know, initiate on him without him knowing from his sphere of vision. But with Earthshaker Fisher being so long range, you can sit in fog, start things off, and go in with a Sunstrike, land a Sunstrike with Fisher, then Cold Snap. You've got so many opportunities to, you know, even hook shot later on, glimpse them back when you stun them up with a Fisher. It's just such a good hero of playing this. It's almost a counter sneaky role. You know, Earth Spirit, yeah. Ricky, Bounty, they play this. We're hiding, we're invis, we see you, but you don't see me. I'm getting info for my team. The, uh, Milan's Earthshaker is like the literal reversal of that. It's like, we see you, I'm going to hide here until you come towards us, then I'm going to stun you. Right. Yeah, and, I mean, that. The, I think that the other thing about this is just this pull enables him to play this hero, which otherwise is like not been able to do things. I think that if you don't have this pull, the hero is not nearly as strong. Um, like, getting off to a decent start, getting those arcane boots early, and now building towards the blink dagger. And then the rest of the team plays around it so well. So, yeah, it's a great start for them. Um, I still think, though, that this is NIP with a draft that just hasn't come on yet. Do you think that Pro Dota can keep on snowballing from here and, you know, getting Kaiser involved in kills, things like that, getting to an early Midas? Uh, they have just got Clockwork to level 6, so I'm definitely expecting some kind of movement from him. The Midas from Kaiser will come in time through Sunstrike kills, likely set up by Milan or 3-3 on the Earthshaker and the Clockwork. The fear I have is how much impact Garter has. Because Troll is this kind of weird, fluid hero that, you know, can morph between building hitter and team fighter and solo pick off hero depending on what kind of item build you go for. 
Now, whether it is the Vlad's Intermad style or the Shadow Blade or just rushing into a, a Hurricane Flight or a BKB, there are so many things you can look towards as this troll. But it looks like they'll find Trixie. Yeah, this should be a kill. They have Clockwork here as well. Some strike coming through. Garter's gonna pick it up. And certainly, if you give him the kills, he's gonna be able to get into that BKB, which allows him to actually be either that Tim Fighter or building hitter that you're talking about. They need him to be. But yeah, I, I worry about his impact, especially against the Lycan. You know, Hani's uh, era's Lycan here is going to have the armor soon. It'll build into the Mask of Madness. He'll be shredding towers and buildings. They do have some good forms of lockdown. You know, Earthshaker, Clockwork, very chaotic in team fights, can lock in single targets for extended periods of time. But if era's given kind of free reign with, with you know, a duel or a shackle or a, any of these other tools that his team has, a boundless strike, can enable him to just run through past the guys that are going to keep him locked down and look for the easy kills, the juicy ones in the back. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Well, it's definitely going to be uh, a lot dependent upon sort of initiation and um, I guess vision too, which is something that we talked about in the last game. That was very important. The Night Stalker being the, the sort of hero that we thought was going to make the biggest difference, but you have a lot of vision on Proto to still here. You know, Disruptor and Clockwork, if you follow a little bit outside of the Glimpse range, you can get a nice little rocket flare out there to pull somebody back in, but it does rely upon you being able to actually take the fight, and right now, it does not look like that's what Proto to want to do. Instead, they're heading in towards either mid or top, and they're going to trade off tier one towers here. Yeah, I just put a gold for gold. I, I only just saw... I only just... Uh oh. Uh, they might end up finding a kill here, but the Sunstrike, it's actually not on the mark. They have the stun to follow if they want to use it. Double Remnant forward. They're going to lose J4. No, maybe they are. Yeah, there's going to be the stun coming out, though. They take down Boxy regardless. It was a good play to take off the Flame Guard of the Ember Spirit. That allowed them to keep alive a little bit longer. Still a reasonably good trade there. They don't get the Tier 1 top, though, which is something NIP do secure for themselves with Era taking the final hit there. But killing off Ember Spirit when he's in his transition period into boost and travel is very important because that's the item that allows him to move not just from lane to lane to farm, but to team fights as well. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be a duel in the top lane. Sunstrike, Trixie's gone. Too much for you. Sadie, I think he ran down by 3 3. Turn and punch that clockwork. It ain't going to happen. Maybe Monkey King here has been able to find it. No, they break down the tree. 3 3 somehow, some way, getting away with murder, but. Will finally be brought down in the end. Like it comes up, he's gonna clean up house, and unfortunately, I do not believe that Monkey King is gonna be punished. Oh, not worth it in the end. The good, uh, the good turnaround on the duel there. I don't think it was a victory for the Clockwork. They killed Legion. Yeah, yeah. they killed her off just as the duel had ended, unfortunately. But again, good movements from PD into the Dire Jungle, just causing havoc. Forcing the shapeshift there from Era is actually a pretty big deal because now Garter can be a lot more free in the places that he is allowed to farm. You know, he can shove waves out a little bit further for the next minute and a half or so. So can Kaiser's Invoker, who has his hand of Midas. But, you know, losing a couple of supports in offlaner when you, you kill the enemy offlaner, you kill their mid laner, their Ember Spirit, not getting the Monkey King isn't, you know, a, a big loss there. But you can see the effort that they're making continually to try and shut down this Ember Spirit. They, they have all eyes on him. Another smoke rotation in here, the Disruptor as well as the Clockwork. They are going to spot him out, and there's the hookshot in right at the star. He gets caught in the silence. Sunstrike as well, the boot, and Kaiser involved in another clutch kill. Yeah, another big one for them. And it's all, again, that moment that you were talking about, the need to find it before he gets the boots of travel online. Oh well, yeah, look at him. He's still 600 gold away. It's closing in on 12 minutes. I... I... Like, this is an item you need. It's almost on the levels of Tinker requirement, right? The boots of travel. Just to move from fight to fight, from lane to lane, keep on farming, head into, you know, your your uh, Maelstrom, your Blade Mail, your Radiance, whatever you aim for. But it's such a useful tool to just remnant, use all of your mana and your HP, come back into a fountain, bottle up regen, and then remnant again. Ah, uh, look at that. They also ended up making a nice little play there. Uh, um, it was cute because Lycan oh, found them. Oh, all right. Easy peasy. That's a, that's a very dead uh, Mr. Kaiser. I'm not sure how the Legion got there fast enough to kill and duel off the Invoker, but I'm guessing it was down to Hani with a Boundless Strike or something. Well, uh, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it too, and like, Hand of Midas on Hani already? That's a huge pickup, right? Really big. Interesting kind of adaptation there, not going for the Tread Solar Crest like he did last game. So this one, probably more expecting to see the Midas Phase Boots Basher. But we'll, we'll see where he heads to. Solar Crest is still very good against the Troll Warlord, but I think... I think in these chaotic team fights, having a basher on your Monkey King with Wukong's command against things like, you know, Cogs, Tornado, Fisher, all of this just kinetic field spam in the middle of a fight, having a Wukong's command to make sure that nothing is easy for PD to set up onto individual heroes to find the kill, uh, that, that helps you out tremendously. Well, eight to nine so far. It is about a 1500 gold lead for NIP, getting even on the uh, experience as well, but Midas terms, that's what we're also looking at as well here. Invoker has one, Hani has one. The clockwork is going back for one as well, so maybe some more scaling. Um, Roche is a possibility, obviously with Troll Warlord, has up three points in Fervor, but it feels like they're gonna need to pick before that actually happens, as Hani is gonna be found yet again, and most likely going to be brought down. Cold Snap is there as well. While they're setting up on the Legion Commander in the bottom lane, maybe? Or who's setting up on who? I am not sure what trick. I think Trixie just wants the overwhelming odds and run away, but he's actually pinging Garto to get TPs to come down. They have Boots of Travel on the, on the Ember Spirit now, and they're gonna go for this. But I don't know if it's gonna end up being good enough as, well, they found him with Insania. There's gonna be the TP in, Sunstrike as well. They get the dual win for the Troll Warlord even. Oh. So that entire time the Ember was like, he was walking back to get the spots. Yeah. I mean, re really nicely timed by Tricky to start the duel, you know, as the BOTs come on in. But like you're saying, it was maybe expected that the Ember Spirit would arrive a little earlier. A dual win going the way of Troll is still a, a win for PD, even if he dies. The three-man you know, convergence there from NIP all going towards one lane means that other lanes are open. Milan has his Blink Dagger on Earthshaker. You've got top lane 3-3. Three, three. He's got the Hand of Midas complete now that you were mentioning he was aiming towards. PD have been bought a fair amount of time, but I still go back to my main problem with this Radiant Draft is the Troll Warlord. What does he do this game? He's got Vlad's and he's building S and Y now. But against, like, these tanky heroes through Flame God or through Press the Attack or just, just through Armlet on Lycan with a Mask of Madness, the damage output that you mentioned PD are kind of lacking is becoming more apparent in the mid game. Yeah. So they, they kind of need to weather this storm, get Invoker farmed, try and take some big, like, they need some big wombo combo team fights to, to win out against NIP at this point. But I don't know if they do that through pressuring tier one bot or top. Or if they do that through, you know, a smoke gang. If, if they smoke from their jungle into enemy jungle, maybe they catch one or two. But it almost feels like PD want to catch a big fight. Yeah. Well, and, and maybe it's when you get the Aghanim Scepter on Invoker, you can try and bait a response with like a glimpse back or something, or clockwork going in, and then maybe there's a bit of a group up. Because if you take a look right now on, on NIP's side, they don't have any four steps. So you catch somebody with clockwork cogs, Maybe they start to groove up a little bit. You have Milan with the Blink Dagger done now, and then there's a big Echo Slam possibility. So it looks like they're going to force the top lane, maybe try and get some reactions, and then take the fight through the Blink Dagger on Earthshaker. Yeah. I mean, the safest option is to, like, five mana to a tier one. I, I like this option. Forcing NIP to react and come to them. The thing is, though, Boxy with his Invis rune is going to... Ooh, he's going to scout out. They see! They have an Observer Ward on Kaiser. They could go for this kill and completely ruin any push attempts the PD make. He's got to play this so carefully right now. They're, they're trading out towers for the moment, but this is only going to last as long as it's going to be... Oh, Monkey King in the area. Kaiser, they thought about it, but it's oh, too, too scary far. now with everybody else there. Yeah, they lose vision over on PD. Invoker gets high ground. He moves up. It's too far away for them to initiate anymore. Yeah. Kind of sad that they had that vision advantage and they had Boxy in the perfect position, but couldn't capitalize on it. But here comes the tower position. Oh, Akriti on Troll. Okay, there's the Battle Trance as well. It's a lot of damage. Forcing the Glyph and forcing NIP to come back and defend. Yeah, max exhort right now from the uh, from uh, Kaiser as well. So it's like 120 or something bonus damage on top of that. They are going to spot out 3-3 with the Lycan Wolves, but we're not able to uh, make anything of it, it looks like. Trixie has finally finished Blink Dagger and can TP to a lane now, but 
not really the timing they wanted on it, you know. NIP almost feels a minute and a half too late on a lot of their movements and what they're doing. Maybe not a minute and a half, but you know, 30, 45 seconds. They seem a little bit delayed in kind of moving to, to PD's beat that they're setting. Uh, just look at J4 even, you know, he's Dyer's got brown boots now. He's doing okay. Empowers me. Yeah. Nearly, a, nearly a thousand net worth, Lyrical. The, the, the disruption is fine, right? <laughs> yeah, this is like my games. It's great. I love it. it, it it's a struggle when you know that you like Radiant need to pick a disruptor type hero, but... Oh, oh there oh. it is. Baby, baby. Leaving the kill over for his... Well, actually, no, for the tower. <laughs> um, so Invoker <laughs> didn't get any part of that, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> even Rocket Flare got in on the assist. In. Oh. Uh, they blew that Amber Spirit to hell though. And they're looking for more mid lane. If they can find Insania behind the tier one, it's huge for them. So 3-3 three, three just needs to line up, but a good power shot will scout them out and do a bit of chip damage as well. You know, when we were talking about the lack of damage for Pro Dota, I feel like the Lacrity in a lot of ways solves that problem. Like, something that you don't always think about, but it's incredibly good here. And Gardner gonna be caught for the moment. The duel is there as well. The Shackle, no, with the glimpse back. They are still going to win that duel somehow, some way. 3-3, getting ran down by Eric. Gets the hook shot off with the TP. Will make the escape. So they lose their troll, but they also force out the Lycan ulti and the Wukong's command, I guess. But that's not the craziest long cooldown at this point. No, and Roshan's open up now. That that's really quite poor for PD losing their troll because he was so far forward like that. Maybe expecting they could, they could take a team fight on the ramp. You know, you know if they get some kind of circle fight here around the tier one, but troll is just that little bit too far forward. And between duel and shackle shot, you know, they've, they've got so much lockdown on NIP to allow Eero to run around. Here we go though. Moving in, Insania is gonna spot out and catch the Disruptor as he went for the TP. There's the jump board, gone before Duel even came out. It was on cooldown, but they didn't want to stick around. But they will be able to come and contest Roshan, at least for the moment. See if they scout out the Monkey King. I'm going to go for a Primal Spring, then jump away. No, he got caught! Oh, he ended up getting caught there, but they don't have anything else to chase him. Yeah, they don't have to jump. Oh. Amber? Going in, Sunstrike is there as well. It's going to end up being a little bit off the mark. 3-3 pushes several back with the Cog. Lycan's still doing Roche, and now they're gonna lose the Clockwork. That was a rough couple of minutes there for Pro Dota. Yeah, just kind of walking into these fights without their full five. You know, one by one filtering in, trying to find a pick top lane on Monkey King, getting sucked into the action. Era still in the Roche pit. Because it looked like when PD lost that Disruptor that Roshan would be halted. There would be no further attempt because there's vision, there's this kind of you know, encroachment of the Radiant team into this Roshan area. But once they go and overextend a little bit too far, NIP fully exploit. This Ember Spirit's doing a great job at like, like being aggressive when he needs to, while letting Era farm when the Lycan needs to kind of catch up in certain scenarios. And now you see Era up at the top. Almost 10,000 net worth. That's, uh, it's definitely like, and, and it doesn't really feel like he needs to be that concerned right now about overstepping either. He's got the Aegis on hand, he can just go in with the shapeshift if he wants to try and destroy the, you know, small supports of Pro Dota. You still have to be wary of Earthshaker. Um, we did see Milan, actually I think that it was LeBron the other day, who struggled a little bit at getting into his second item with the Earthshaker, but uh, he's almost got the Yule Scepter completed at this point, so that can solve some of the issues of just getting blown up by the Ember Spirit, like it seems. It's so difficult when you're Earthshaker though, you know? You don't get a GPM talent, your respawn talent is at level 20. It feels kind of sad to be this hero sometimes, especially if you can't go Hand of Midas. But he, right. he's been making his hero look good, honestly. Milan has had uh, exceptional initiations, great pulling, great farming capabilities. He's been in the right place at the right time. Well, there's gonna be another one. No, the press the attack. That hurts, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts. <laughs> press the attack and the shackle to stop him landing the Fisher onto Ember Spirit. Very, right. very nicely played by NIP. Which by all means should have been another blow up onto Ember and likely would have been a tier two top lane. But at this point they have to retreat. Trixie with a DD rune. Oh, it's wearing off now, but he was running forward looking for a target. Could still find it if they're not careful. It's like 3-3 three, three is gonna end up getting the team away. Has the uh, force staff done now after finishing off the hand of Midas. And I guess the other thing we hadn't talked about a ton is the invoker. Uh, we talked about maybe some of the struggles earlier getting into that first hand of Midas, but now he's got bots done on top of the Aghanim Scepter. 
is starting to get those points up in Wex. So four points up now. He's going to be a more potent team fighter as this game goes on. Yeah, especially when LIP haven't... Uh, they've, got, they've got BKB on Lycan, but their other heroes, Ember Spirit doesn't want to buy one. Legion would much prefer to get Blade Mail, Armlet, AC, Abyssal Blade, you know, aggressive damage items rather than going back for a BKB. But Invoker now, this is really where he starts to shine. But like I said, Lycan, Era, so farmed. Armlet, Mom, and BKB. This hero is so difficult, not just to lock down, but to stop him from killing off your supports in the back. You know, Earthshaker and Disruptor, who are, for the most part, kind of static supports. Uh, during, like, sort of at the beginning and during team fights, you know, they cast all their spells and they kind of wander around waiting for their spells to come back off cooldown. He could just run them down. Yeah. So now you're trading the tier 1 powers for the tier 2 as Lycan not really afraid. It's the best that you can do at this point if you're a pro Dota gaming, but NIP just feel to have the answers right now across the map. Um, and they're taking over the, you know, secondary jungle as well. Kaiser is here to push out the lanes a little bit, but they're going in now. Wukong's command is going to come out as well as a boundless strike, and Kaiser is going to sit there and take it to the face. That, God. That, is, that is sick. That is really, really sick. The amount of damage that they can output within you know, two seconds there. Great setup by Hani. Era with a preemptive shapeshift just runs on in. They've still got Aegis. They apply pressure. They take and remove one of the key heroes for PD right now that's meant to be splitting and, and fighting and defending base completely out of the game. And they might find more. Yeah, that's three of them. Static Storm is down, but the Kongs actually push them out of it. And there's the TP away by J4. The Shackle, how does that land on the two heroes? What? That the, whoa, wow. All right, well, Era also found Milan in the mid lane. Ugh, dumpster fire of the last couple minutes for Dota. Yeah. Radiance lots and lots of question attack. marks. <laughs> um, it feels like you have no Radiance direction. They, they are as unsure of what to do as I am at this point. <laughs> I mean, the, the luck on the shackles there as well. <laughs> but it's not just that, right? You know, you, you've got two heroes that can't kill on their own with... So right. the, the, the plan there, right, is Clockwork Disruptor look for one that TP's bot lane and they Sunstrike with hooks up hogs and maybe a glimpse Static Storm. You know, they, they dump everything onto one hero. But when Invoker dies, they are meant to like TP out. They're meant to leave. So they stuck around trying to like split push tier two uh, after, you know, Garth has already run away. There's just these little kind of miscommunication moments where they're not quite sure what the end goal is. You know, we, we've... We've seen them hookshot into uh, into Sunstrike. We've seen the Echo Slam into Sunstrike. These little pickoffs and kills are good. They do wonders for your economy. They are very, very nice, you know, pick-me-offs. They're morale boosters. But in the grand scheme of things, what does it do for you when you can't convert that into a tower, into a Roshan? Yeah. You know, you're out of position going for these fights. But they find Monkey King at the very least. Yeah, nicely done. A lot of pings coming out and... I think that that should have been pretty well telegraphed. Look at the vision around the map. Nobody showing in the jungle, nobody showing in their own jungle. It had to be a smoke play and uh, Monkey King ends up getting punished. And now you're taking a look at maybe having to trade out some barracks. They're gonna TP back several heroes here. There's Legion as well as the Wind Ranger, but it's gonna be Garter hitting away at this tower. That will force them back though with one overwhelming odds. Clockwork looking to try and mess with Era a little bit, but Wolves are blocking a hook. No way in, and lots of ways out. PDTP, everyone back to base, and IP defend. But again, it's similar to game number one. We're getting, we're almost getting to that point where it's the you know knife edge Dota, where both teams are looking for the same objectives. They're both looking for you know lanes of racks for fights around enemy base. So we are likely again to see the kind of mirroring of strategies where one team goes and takes enemy jungle. They ward up there. It's safer for them. They ward up the enemy shrine and you just try and play around that new base of command. But with Monkey King and Ember Spirit and Legion Commander being so heavily mobile and able to, you know, move around the map, the greater map with boosts of travel, I feel that PD are severely disadvantaged yeah. against NIP when it comes to mirroring their effects. You know, Invoker could do a similar thing, but he's not as good as a Monkey King giving vision. Helps. I will say that I think the pickoff game of Pro Dota might be a little bit stronger, like in terms yeah. of being able to find somebody with Milan, the Echo Slam into Sunstrike, that happens much more quickly, uh, but then it's like, can you get out afterwards? 
um, which is the tough part. And they're going to force again this tier 3 tower in the top lane. Troll is not there, though. So they're kind of left in this awkward little spot where they're looking for a pickoff, and there's nothing that's really going to come of it. Yeah. But like, like you said, I think you hit the nail on the head. Can you get out afterwards? Can you run away from Wukong's command? Can you not get shackled with two heroes? Can you not get dueled? Can you not get chased by Lycan? There's so many ways for NIP to say, right, we lost one hero, and now we chase. Because they have not just great, you know, macro map maneuverability, but they also have micro maneuverability with Lycan move speed, with remnants, with slight chains. Well, and you see there as well, Clockwork and the Earthshaker wanting to find themselves an opening, but nobody shows in the lane, and the ones that do have backup, so they TP to the bottom lane, and now you push out again. Rinse and repeat. The thing to be the combo breaker for me is when it's going to be that one team predicts this movement and then gets into position for a pickoff, probably, right? Or is it just you have to wait for the next Roshan? But then you also have the situation of smoke into smoke. You know, okay. it, it's, it's one of those kind of, not coin flippy things, but... It's dependent on who reads the map at what moment, like at what moment in time. You know, you can have so many parameters out on the map. You've got vision. You know where people are not, especially NIP with the the freaking the, the, the full frontal observer wards on all three lanes, watching for smokes to come at them. So I think NIP have the advantage there again, but it's so difficult to like gauge who starts the fight and who gets the best initiation oh, run away run away static storm they jump into all of it this is gonna end up being a little bit bad can they find the kill no oh and 3-3 is actually gonna end up dying now they get a double for boxy that bkb very timely indeed and it ends up keeping alive the ember spirit despite jumping into the static storm and trixie also alive now they found j4 he is also dead so three gone, no buyback. It looks good for a moment, but the BKB had already come out from Starman. Yeah. Oh, nice dodge by Trixie as well. They tried to fish a Sunstrike, but it wasn't quite on the mark. That, en that entire fight, though, is like a bunch of what-ifs for PD. What if Invoker was closer? What if the hookshot from Clockwork landed a second sooner? What if, you know, the Legion Commander had dueled anyone other than Troll? What if the Troll had managed to get his BKB off? before the duel lands. You know, there are all these little things that go wrong to PD just because of the snappy, fast decision-making from NIP. They see a target, they jump in, they commit heavily for it, but they come out on top because PD were kind of indecisive with what they were doing. They were, you know, spread out a little bit too much. Invoker, if he'd been there for a tornado with a meatball on top, that's two kills immediately. Right. That's two yeah. kills, NIP are down the drain. But they weren't. Oh. And, and now it's also that point where you have BKBs coming out for the rest of them, too. Like, right now you have one queued up for the Monkey King. If you can't blow up Wukong's command at the start of the fight, like, it's just, it's over. It's, there's nothing you can do at that point. Um, and Ember has one. Yeah. Yeah, that last fight, that's the thing, is like, in that Static Storm, he was able to still get everything off and didn't take any damage from it, so ends up staying alive there. Like, I don't know. It's rough. It's a rough go. Where do you go from here? You have Deso, Donald, Monkey King. Oh, God. Game is hard. Game, game is hard. The game is hard for both teams. I think NIP probably feel a lot safer because of their items, because of the fact they've just scouted Roshan has respawned. If they can take one pick, one good team fight here, take Aegis, and then go high ground, I think the game is all but over. KB pop, there's a jump in, they have it on both heroes. Can they kill off this Legion Commander? Hookshot as well, they've caught him now. Trixie getting ran down, but he gets the arm with Tongle off. Tornado just barely gonna catch him on the edge. That should be the death of him. Era in the meantime though, was able to kill off 3-3. Milan still in the area, has a Fissure, has an Echo Slam. Could think about going on area here. There's a Cold Snap as well. They might think about turning this, but it's a little bit too scary with Broxy just behind. So they take the trade one for one. Legion thankfully went down just at the very edge of that tornado. Yeah, guards are expecting him to die uh, much, much faster, but Trixie escaped with a good armor toggle. Still died at the end, but rush down alive, of course. The main focus here for NIP as it dies so quickly. But I, I, I just want to, like, play these. Roxy has been very good this series, especially in that last team fight. He didn't show, he didn't expend spells, didn't over-initiate, didn't you know, jump in willy-nilly. He was very patient, very calm, stayed with Insania, and was waiting for a moment where he could turn the fight again. Because, you know, the fight starts okay for NIP, then it turns a little bit for PD as the Legion dies, Wukong's command is, is waning. And then PD are like at this almost peak of power during that, that team fight engagement in itself. 
when they're retreating on their ramp, uh, to sort of move back down to the mid lane, they have the high ground, they have the vision, they have the heroes they need, but they don't see the Ember Spirit, and that is like the one factor mm -hmm. that would cause them to either fight or run. And in the end, they just had to run. Uh, maybe now you can make something happen up in the top here. If they could find this kill on Era, Sunstrike with this huge Echo Slam coming in, maybe Milan thinks about it. He is going to wait for the Enchant Totem to come off of cooldown. They're thinking about it, but Milan not going to take that risk yet, and everybody else is off the map. If he saw that this was a completely alone Era, he might think about it. I I don't even think it's worth it then. It's a BKB armor, 3000 HP, Aegis carrying Lycan. Even if you kill him the first time, it's just Aegis. Yeah. Sad. I, I want to see it. I just wanted to see him die. Is that wrong of me? Is that so bad? Um, no. I mean, he's six zero and 2 He hasn't died yet. Yeah. Is there anyone else in this game that's... No, it's just him. He's the only one yet to die. You are a completionist, Lyrical. You must have every hero in the game die. Absolutely. Um, well, we do have that Invoker continuing to scale well. He's going for at least a queued up Blink Dagger right now. Finishes it off. So, Blink, Lincolns, and, you know, Aghanim Scepter bots. He's quite farmed, but with the BKBs, how effective is he going to end up being? Yeah, and you can see here the kind of flagging the PD wanted to start the whole mirror movement again. You know, they take this box of the map, NIP are down in this box of the map, and NIP are like, no, we do not want to do this. This is not how we win the game. And the line is like immediately drawn there by, uh, by I think it was the Ember Spirit saying, guys, just let me, let me sit, bot. I'll split push bot lane. I've got travels. I've nearly got Scardi. I can escape. I can survive anything that PD throws at me. You guys just yeah. go and deal with their push. Make sure that they can't get to our tier threes. Okay. Yeah, and I, I kind of, it's a cool little build that he's gone for here with the Scotty too. Just extra survivability as it does look like this duel up in the top lane. They are some Lycan Wolves blocking his way out, but there's going to be the Cogs. Cool as a Cucumber, 3-3. Three, three. Just a little waltz away, why not? Now though, Garter in a little bit of trouble, but actually who is it that's going to be caught here? It's the Legion, or rather, excuse me, the Wind Ranger who's going to be brought down. And now they've also got caught here onto that Ember Spirit trying to run away. He's going for the jump out and <laughs> looks like they'll be able to make the escape. So they do still take down the Wind Ranger and keep their clockwork alive. Yeah, that's great for them. I mean, the other thing, Boxy just had to use BKB and Triple Remnant. This is a huge yeah. window. This is a huge window for PD. Ember Spirit has just lost like a third of his damage. He's lost his team fight capability through BKB. But PD looks like they're too timid, still too afraid of Lycan with Aegis to actually go walking into them because he's still got that for what, another minute and a half? Yeah, yeah. just about. Well, I mean, I do still wonder though with NIP, like these little pickoffs that happen from time to time. It kind of doesn't change the status quo that much since there's no Roshan to take and you still have to worry. Like, it can't really take a tower off of this, right? Like, there's no other objectives to be taken except maybe taking more substantial map control. And yeah, take some gold, get some wards down, but it's that shift from bot lane to top lane that we keep sort of, you know, alluding to and talking about is that they want to push top high ground. <laughs> <laughs> on this tier 3, take control of enemy jungle. So they move from their jungle where you know they already have wards. They can now see when NIP are in there. But they don't have any vision or wards on the top half of the map. And this smoke, even though the Observer Ward would have spotted them naturally, they don't see it coming. Well, and Insania nice wanting to find that opening. They back they out. They scanned They it. know what's happening. Yeah. And 3-3, three, three, he's going to be able to get out again. Oh, no, Boundless straight. they caught him. But hold on, the fight is broken up into two separate parts here. So 3-3 three, three is going to end up being ran down. Uh, he's going to create some space first, though, and cause some issues. But that does also mean that because the fight was spread, you can't take a fight in the bottom lane too much. You kill off the Disruptor, but that's it. Yeah, and now Invoker's like, cool. I've got Boots of Travel. I've got Meatball. I can go and shove bot lane. But NIP have two lanes pushing in across the river right now. Mid lane has a double wave. Top lane's going to have a double wave as well. If they can have both of these lanes with the, their five heroes pushing down them hard, they could look to take maybe one or two lanes of barracks here, or at the very least force uh, some buybacks from PD. But Clockwork doesn't. For two yeah. minutes, Clockwork has no buyback. Right. That is a problem. I'm just going to say this. Every point where every time there's been like 
a big decisive moment or like something has shifted or there's been some type of a you know a, a change that's needed to be happening in terms of strategy but it takes a little pause <laughs> apparently there's something going on with their computers they need to talk See, about whatever i've noticed right. this as well but i didn't want to say anything the other the other day like the other day kaiser was legitimately having pc issues so i've just kind of let it slide and i'm i'm assuming yeah. there's just like some problems but even between games they wanted like a five ten minute break to, to you know chill out talk about how they wanted to you know take game number two how they want to approach this what they want what their game plans are they're a very what seems to be a very methodical and you know forward thinking team uh in, in terms of you know out, outside of game meta strategy yeah. <laughs> going, going for this lovely pause here yeah oh man well you know what it happens i and there's no way to enforce it but i'll throw a little bit of shade at proto to this time by the way take a look over here at invoker the chaos meteor down from the the high ground let me see if we can actually see it up on the up on the graph look at that it's crazy looking scary spooky on the graph no, not on the grass. Sorry, on the ground. I'm like, I'm looking at showcase <laughs> mood, showcase oh, really? mode. Yeah, oh. the, the like chaos meteor on high coming down. Oh, nice. That's big. It's making some scary noises too. If you go into the showcase mode. Yeah, I'm. I'm also still using the aquatic terrain. Oh. So above Invoker, there are actually some bubbles. I never realized this, but. The, the heroes in Dota with the aquatic terrain are actually breathing underwater. Like, there are bubbles above him. Then there's the meeple ahead of him that looks, looks like the sun is falling from the sky. This is nice. so legit. I need to get that thing. What's the level it opens up again? It's like 150 or something. It's not, it's not that far. Okay. Well, there's the Aegis down. NIP. Now in a position to... It still seems pretty scary going high ground. That, that is this patch in a nutshell. High ground is scary. For the, for the past like three months, teams have just been trying to figure out what the hell do we do to break high ground. We have one hero with like alacrity and, you know, healing ward behind them, which is kind of why Juggernaut was so, so important alongside Invoker for a long time. Wings tried the whole Brewmaster Invoker. We've seen heroes go for like, you know, Ursa just to win team fights and smash people. So, though you are so over farmed that high ground is easy. Oh. Scary, scary, spooky, spooky. Oh, they broke the tree though. The Wind Ranger ended up breaking the tree of Hani, <laughs> and so they couldn't get the boundless strike. Oh man, that that hurts. Insania's kick. We're That's saying it. The most <laughs> the most comedic thing ever. Uh, so, someone tweeted. I think it was Fluff that tweeted out about Wind Ranger and Monkey King um, mechanics. And I kind of tested it. If you're friendly or enemy Wind Ranger, like doesn't matter who you are, if you power shot the tree that Monkey King is jumping to or jumping on, will break and he will get stunned. But there are other spells which are meant to break trees but don't. So oh. power shot breaks trees. Um, I, I I can't remember off the top of my head what spells they were, but I tested things you know like Earth Spirit Boulder Roll. Rolling Boulder is meant to break trees, and I'm pretty sure that breaks the tree around the Monkey King and brings him down as well. But there's some other stuff that doesn't. Like, huh. Monkey, King, Monkey King's jump to tree and the break mechanic on trees isn't consistent. Sometimes the tree is invulnerable and, like, just does not break at all. And sometimes it just falls over and stuns the Monkey King and screws him over. That's, uh, that's silly. That's just, in, that's silliness. I, I, I think that it's, it's a really weird thing that's sometimes hard to code and everything. Oh god, Kaiser. Oh no. Well, the Lincoln Sphere is gonna be popped now. Can they get here in time to try and save the day? The Disarm is there as well. Maybe in a little bit of trouble now. Broxy does have another Remnant though, so we'll be able to make the escape. But Insania in a little bit of trouble herself. Clockwork gets caught in the cogs, or rather, in the duel. Do they have enough damage to bring him down? Not as of yet. 3-3, alive on nothing, but will die to the power shot era. Just punches J4 down. And Milan also going to most likely fall here as Brock T is unstoppable. Very, very chaotic team fights though. There's a duel inside Cogs. There's Earthshaker not able to use Blink Echo because he's jumped on as well. The Sunstrike's coming through to try and find Hani's Monkey King, but he's well on his way out of there. It's just so hard to find a target, latch onto them, and make sure that you do damage, you know? There's just heroes yeah. running everywhere. There's BKBs being popped. But in the long run, as NIP burn through their BKBs, this Invoker is going to become more and more potent with its Octarine Core, buying a BKB of his own, which is obviously a late one, so it'll be full 10-second duration. 
while Garcha is holding on to an 8 second BKB of his own. Right. Yeah, and you do have the BKB, particularly for the Ember Spirit, wearing down. Like, he's down to 6 seconds. The Lycan is the other one that's uh, relatively new, just was recently purchased and popped for the first time. So that, in some ways, feels like it's okay. Trixie right now does have the Heaven's Halberd, so a way to break the Lincoln Spear of the Invoker, which could make all the difference in the world for the way that these fights go. And it's off. Where is Legion hiding right now? I heard press the attack, which is just hitting creeps. Yeah. Pushing wave. Love to see it. Next Roshan's up in a minute. And that honestly is going to be the game deciding Roshan. If PD can steal this, I feel that they've got a good strong chance of, you know, pushing down a lane and taking a lane of Rax. But if NIP take it, I feel like they have almost a guaranteed victory in their hands. Yeah. It'd be pretty huge if they can make it work. Invoker's um... level 25 is like mega important. Getting him to 25 is probably the, the key to PD staying in or winning this game. Having the tornado cooldown. Yeah. And I mean, the, the other thing about it too is that, like, he's going back for that BKB now as well, so it, it mitigates the amount of that the Ember Spirit's gonna be able to do. Uh, you talked about that earlier. So, being able to, you know, simultaneously stay alive through the initiation and get multiple tornadoes off with the BKBs running down to these melee cores of Ninja's pajamas, all of these things are gonna be working in concert to make the fights more difficult for NIP. But they can get that Roshan. It's party time. It really is. Yeah. It really is. I do like this build to Insania, though. I've got to say the Blink, Ether Lens, and Solar Crest. Now, a good mix of kind of aggressive jump abilities there with Blink and Ether Lens, but also defensive with Solar Crest. And you know, Shackle Shot can be used to save one of your teammates at the same time. Uh, PD have finally picked up a gem, though. So they'll be able to see the wolves that have been scouting them for. 30 minutes or so. I'll try and find out where Hani's been placing his Observer Wards. Uh, he's been jumping around from tree to tree, getting deep in behind enemy lines. J4. Not want to get brought down right now. Still sitting at the most unfortunate of net wards. He is going to get shackled. Leave this guy alone. He's got 22,000 or 2,200 net wards. So poor. Could you imagine how different this game would look if, like, Disruptor actually had been able to get some farm on himself? What, like, an Aghanim Scepter? Yeah, it would be yeah, amazing. Huge. Well, you know, like, honestly, just a Glimmer Cape would be a massive deal here for him to run away from Lycan or Legion, you know, dual the uh, Glimmer the dual target or forcing away or something like that. But he has been the sacrifice, you know. We knew it was coming from laning stage through to mid game. It was the hero that they felt they needed with the repositioning of Glimpse, the team fight control of, yeah. of you know, the other spells. But he was never going to get any kind of gold in this game, with Milan taking up that four roll. Yeah. Well, you have the Invoker over here pushing the lane. Needs to be careful. Like we said, there is still the jump forward, Heaven's Halberd, into duel. But Invoker is going to back out. In the meantime, 3-3. Three, three. Hanging out over here as well. And yeah, just going to TP back home after the fact. Here. That was only. Oh no! I was gonna say, that felt like the third Roshan. Lyrical. They've done it. They've done it again. But this time it's an NIP that's done it and not PD. <laughs> what is wrong with people? Stop leaving cheese in caves. I know the Italians and the French do it to try and get their cheese nice and moldy. But in Dota 2, you pick your cheese up and you stick it in your freaking backpack. That's right. Take put, put your cheese in your backpack, folks. Come on now. Yeah. It's 2017 for God's sake. Oh, wow. You know what else it is, though? It's going to be a Aghanim Scepter done for 3-3 and a Daedalus completed for Boxy. So this is actually, like, semi-right-click Ember now territory. This is a lot of damage that's coming out, and it looks like maybe a Battle of Bruin. They're thinking about chasing this one. They've already used the chains, though, and everybody is just going to get out. Milan! Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh. Except, except him. They know that 3 3's up here though. They caught a glimpse of him. Maybe, maybe, maybe. He still has Hookshot available. The cogs are there as well for the pushback. And no TP for eight seconds. They 
sort of caught sight of him. There they hit again. Now Insania, they've caught yet again. Shackle is there. He's still very survivable here. But the Sunstrike coming in. They think about turning this, actually. Foxy taking some damage. Wasn't ever going to be enough. Nah. I would have loved to find the Wind Ranger there with a hook shot. You know, 3-3 was still holding onto it, but it was Boxy that tanked the Sunstrike, fortunately for them. Clockwork dead for one minute, and NIP with Aegis still in hand on their Ember Spirit. Uh, Cheese was uh, Cheese was scouted then by Era. He walked into the pit to use his Shapeshift to try and get to the fight faster, but kind of just walked past it anyway. Oh my god, the Cheese, the Cheese, the Cheese! Let's do it, guys. Pick up the item. There's going to be a tier 2 tower going to the bottom of it, and I just, I feel like this has been the story of both of these games. Like, NIP, they haven't had a way to break high ground, and I, I'm worried that if this game keeps on going in this fashion, eventually they're going to end up running behind, and, you know, they, they need to make something happen with this Aegis, right? Yeah, uh, we saw in the other game they had a massive lead and all got swung around by a couple of good team fights from PD and it was kind of back and forth. And you're talking about the split push again. Invoker has four square spot lane. He's shoved into the tier three. NIP aren't accomplishing anything at all. The pings are coming out now saying, right, we, we have to make a decision. It looks like they'll try and force the lanes back onto the radiant side of the map through TPs or otherwise. Uh, I hope Ember left a remnant. Yeah, he left a remnant for himself. So he'll, he'll clear out this wave and remnant back to the rest of the team. Monkey King is coming in right now, though. Wukong's command gets popped as well as the duel. Milan goes in for the Fissure. A lot of damage coming out. The Sunstrike will not hit onto Trixie. And, well, BKB also popped from Monkey King. So, it's a good kill. You don't have Clockwork for 60 seconds, but you've also used two BKBs. Yeah, I, I think that was honestly a good play by 3-3. They weren't looking to kill or to fight. They're just looking to disrupt and try and bait enemies across the map. But using the BKBs there, there's two BKBs gone. And this wastes Aegis time. You know, Aegis is gone in one minute. Yeah. BKB cooldown, guess what? Pretty close to one minute. I don't know. I, I I still think that they do have a lot of scaling potential. Leisure Commander, everybody jokes, infinite scaling, whatever. Um, Ember also is a monster. He has Daedalus. He's building back towards Shiva's Guard next. They have a lot of ways to do it, but they haven't even taken out a tier 3 tower. They don't have access to shrines. I feel like you use that Aegis to get further ahead, which they are, 20,000 net worth. But at some point, you got to pull the trigger. Like, Pooper, get off the pot. Yeah, not once as Eero, as a Lycan, hit a tier 3 tower. That was like the saddest thing. Oh, Oxy, time to Sunstrike well. And I, I don't think that they're under pressure to make it happen, like, in, instantly or anything, but I do wonder, like, the later this game goes, the more uncertain the outcome is always going to be, right? Like, the later game that you go, the more possibilities there are for Proto to have a comeback. Yeah, with buybacks and diebacks and, you know, split pushing and everything, you are definitely right. But now the BKBs are ready. Unfortunately, Aegis has gone and Cheese is still inside the Roche Pit. NIP, they are almost floundering here, trying to find some kind of opening. You know, PD, they're bunkered back in their base, but this smoke movement out is great for them. If they can find a pick and convert it into something bigger, Wind Ranger is not the one they want to go for. They want to find Ember Spirit or Lycan. Era has been off the map for a long time, but Insane oh. blinks into them. Yeah, that's that's a, a pretty quick and easy pick off there. It does give some vision right now and, and understanding that NIP saw there is a pick off that happened. They know that they're outside of their base. Boom, there um, you go. We don't have anything, I don't believe, like a gem on the Radiant team. Oh uh, no, they do have one on Milan, so they can maybe start securing their, their vision a little bit better. It's hard though. Oh, and Carter Gata. walking right into Boxy. Might try and take this fight though. There's a Fissure, they're slowed down by the Diffusal Blades. The Remnant isn't gonna get out of there quickly enough. And now the DKB comes out, but they also got the Abyssal Blade onto one. Now Era, big bad mad and out of control. Gonna run these guys down. They buy back onto two immediately. Kaiser does have a refresher if he wants to go in for this, but it's a scary fight to take no matter what hook shot. Off the mark as well, they don't find the break of the TP, but now Insania pulled back in a second Second time, he's getting caught. This is going to be Insania dying for the second time in a very short period of time. And now there's no BKBs. If Ember runs into this, this might be a little bit scary. Wanting to pick up the gem, but there's the disarm. Now Clockwork finds the hook shot. Ember in trouble. No more remnants. No more nothing. This guy's gonna get ran down here. Cold snap and killed off. No buyback. 
for a hundred. He's gone for a hundred seconds. Yeah, that's really bad. I mean, the biggest sign of indetermination or lack of experience there is Era has also caught a couple of lucky batches is all the Garta needs. That's one hit right there, and now the shapeshift. It's not going to be enough to catch him as well. Another bash comes through. Era going to drop. None of these heroes have buyback. Oh, God, Miracle, what's happened? Again, one fight to lose it all. A couple of buybacks from PD. We talked about the buybacks and the diebacks, and this is why. They turned the fight around perfectly. The Ember Spirit thought that he could Remnant in and then Remnant out, but he wasn't expecting the Invoker to have, you know, AoE Deafening Blast, be that level 25, on the ready with finger on the trigger so quickly to stop him from escaping. Add in Garcia's lucky bashes with a Diffusal Blade. You do so much damage. You're burning mana. You know, three million mana a freaking second with this troll just whacking at you with alacrity on him and now your base is under pressure do they really not have buybacks at all no money for they, it no money for buybacks no nothing this is a catastrophe of epic proportions and I, I, we'll call it command yeah you're gonna be able to hold them off for a little while i honestly wouldn't mind them see just go to the top lane go hit that other barracks instead but they're gonna go mid they want to try and take this one down right now force out the clip still 40 seconds before lycan is back this potentially could just be game here. Shackle on to two. Nicely played, but the tower is still down. Do they decide to go for more here? They might think about it. They're hitting the barracks, and the alacrity on Garter is just so hard to deal with. They don't have any answers at all. Protoda can't believe they don't have buyback, but there's the duel. Are they going to be able to bring down this toward? They missed the hook shot going in for it. The turn comes out. The bash, the turn. Gar pops the BKB and destroys the Legion. Oh no, and now Ember Spirit brought as well. He gets the PKB off. Can he stay alive though? Another catch. They're going to be able to bring down one. Garter is dead by virtue of that Ember Spirit. Now the Boundless Strike. NVP. NIP have to get some more here. They lost the Barracks for nothing. Well, they do have the Earthshaker inside the pit now. Echo Slam dropped. He is going to fall. So they stepped okay. a bit too far forward. And now Troll doesn't have buyback for yeah. 100 seconds. Now we go back and we calm down after all this and we look at buybacks and diebacks and we and we wonder who comes out on top. How much can NIP get out of this? They only have the Legion down for a minute. Troll is dead for 90 seconds. Earthshaker has no buyback for another four minutes. This is where maybe PD have gone in a little too deep. Uh, that was it, Honestly, it was like split second, a fraction away from Garter being able to TP away there with all the hook shots and the stomps and the uh, enchanted totems slowing down the Ember Spirit. But it was one slight of fist with a Meltrum proc that was all NIP needed to secure that kill and now put themselves in a good position to maybe potentially go high ground of their own. The trouble is they're doing this into an Invoker, one of the best high ground defensive heroes in the game with Ice Wall, Deafening Blast, Tornado, as well as Forge Spirits to keep them at bay and away from their tier 3s. And it looks like NIP can't go for it. They've got heroes spread across the map, split pushing and trying to push in his mid lane at the same time. Now, and what a what a turn of events. We said this whole time that it could happen, that NIP, a whole Aegis duration was used just on farming, on, on literally no damage to the tier three towers. Look at these things. They're like, at least through that Aegis, there was no damage that was dealt on the tier three towers. Um, and you've got Midas's, you've got four heroes, in in the top what is this six of the net worth but it doesn't matter if you don't have buyback and i don't expect nip to make a mistake like that again in this game i would be shocked if they tried to push again without buyback Incoming. oh boy so now trolls alive again yeah this is really rough for nip sunstrike trying to scout out era his favorite horde has been that radiant ancient spot with Roshan, another long spawn here. I don't know, it, it feels like the, these past two games have been decided by this late Roshan spawn, the fourth Roshan, the one that takes freaking 10 years to come back up alive. Mm -hmm. PD, will they smoke again into this to try and steal it under NIP's noses? Yeah, I don't know. That seems like it might be the, the play. Apparently they need a second to figure out what's going on. Um, they're going to go again. Like... So here's the other thing to think about as well, is it's still a 20,000 net worth lead for NIP. The objectives, they're going into the favor of Pro Dota now, but it's not so clean cut and stock standard and saying yeah, he's gonna run in right now, has found J4, Shackle, not gonna match. Right at the start of it, he has the Glimmer Cape to be able to walk away. Static Storm is still there as well as the Ghost Scepter. Like an ulti and BKB are down. They do find a kill on the Disruptor, but he's back up in 20 seconds. Everybody else ran away. It's another BKB, but they have found one, and it will be the kill on a 3-3, but he does have buyback. 
I don't, but I this, don't know if that matters. No, this is this is like all of your pushing power gone to win a team fight where you kill an offlaner and a support and you waste a Bissell on it as well. BKB's down, Shapeshift gone. Well, Shapeshift, I, I, I think. Oh, the, the, oh, yeah. the talent for it is a little, oh, yeah, makes yeah, it a sure. little bit deceiving. Um, okay, it, it's down for like 15 seconds then. It's got a downtime of 17 seconds with the uh, with the time, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Oh, no that's frog. No, hex frog. though. That's the reveal of the hex. Press the attack, but look at the damage. He didn't have his BKB era. Gone again. Did they really do this again with no buyback? Oh, he's 60 gold short. How is this a thing? But Milan, all right, he steps too far forward. Bro Dota, they need to back out. Okay, they can't do it though. They, I don't think that they can push high ground like now. That's right no. now. <laughs> they, they can't. And look at the aggressive play from PD. This might catch them off guard though. All right, Kaiser. He does have another sheep stick. They have refresher as well. There's the shackle. They try and jump forward. The duel is there. That stroll gone. He's out for 90 seconds. Can they make any more plays here? Kaiser is still in this on the back. Goes swapped up, slowing everybody down. They don't have reveal actually to scout him out. Insane is gonna go for it for another very aggressive shackle. Maybe overstep. This bounce a little bit too much. Sun strikes off the mark with the right clicks. Will be enough for the kill. Yet and still, the status quo remains. Kaiser has the pressure hex. Oh, good blink out there. Oh, disruptor almost dead as well. We'll live through that one. This game is insane. I really felt it was coming again when NIP were pushing bot lane with like no buybacks, lacking their BKBs. It was going to be another one of those moments where they felt they had no other options to try and win the game outright then. But oh, losing only era there and getting a couple of good trade off uh, trade offs with Troll dying during the duel. Trixie up to 134 duel victory damage now as well. Uh, NIP are still in a decent position. It still all circles around this Roshan. And with Hani doing inordinate amounts of damage with not just Rock his ultimate, on. but also Boundless Strike, you know, he's got Deso Abyssal and 7,000 gold on this Monkey King. Yeah. He is an insane physical damage dealing force in these team fights. But PD are the ones close to the pit. They are the ones that could make a move inside with a DD rune here and take Roshan. The trouble is that Roshan Taker is dead. Well, maybe they can do this. That Milan is thinking about it at the very least. He picks up the DD. They do have Invoker. That's too scary, at least for the moment. But with Troll coming back up, they will probably go for it, I would imagine. Or the Wraparound? Okay. That's fine. This yeah, could be you, big. If you don't get in there immediately, you kind of expect an IP to be, you know, wandering over with vision of you. You didn't do it smoked or anything, so it's kind of obvious and telegraphed. But this is beautiful. This is like a really good play by PD. Yeah, this is great. And they're actually going to find right at the start of Insania. That's a good pickup for them. Can they actually bring him down? Boxy there as well. Garter is in trouble. Oh, excuse me. Boxy's in trouble. No, they get the duel off. That's going to take down the Troll Warlord. Static Storm is down, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. And now they have the Hex down. 3-3. Three, three. Cogs push back onto the Lycan, keeping him alive. Kaiser will be able to make that escape. So it looks like the fight is going to continue. A second round here, 3-3, three, three, in trouble, abyssal down, and killed off. They have buyback on Troll if they need to use it. it. Does not look like they'll catch him along. He survives. So too will Kaiser, I believe. He got to switch his boots back over into his uh, real inventory. And this is going to be another Roche going into the favor of NIP. They have to make something happen with this one. You just got it. They have to pick up the cheese from this one as well, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Awesome. This is definitely, this is definitely more than third. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say though, though, PD finding Windranger there is like the worst situation to happen. Is Windranger TPing to that shrine to break your smoke to be the one target to get found. If it was anyone else, PD have like a massive, massive chance of winning that team fight. You know, getting bashes down, getting the lockdown there. But it was this awkward engagement where there was a couple of NIP heroes low ground. Ember Spirit got his BKB off, managed to remnant away from Static Storm in the middle of the team fight as well. Even though it looked like it caught him, it has this kind of you know half second delay where he still was able to remnant out as the field was forming. But mm. Era's Lycan, BKB with the shapeshift, with the Abyssal Blade, actually got to do some team fighting. He actually got to chase people and do damage and kill people off. In a way, it's felt like NIP haven't been able to execute their strategy yet, but that fight was much more what their strategy is that they've been trying to do the entire game long. And we'll have to see if they can replicate that again here. It's still... How do you take high ground? We're 58 minutes in, and there has not been a tier 3 taken 
on the side of Pro Dota the entire game when there's a 25,000 net worth lead for the past, like, what has this been now? Almost 20 minutes? They're just not, they're not yeah. willing to go for it. Okay, do you want to know how you take high ground? You have a Wind Ranger support who's level 25 with the minus seven second power shot cooldown talent. Okay. So you just spam power shots and she's like, Insane is doing this on two different waves. He's been doing it mid and top and both lanes are now shoved into the tier threes. Yeah. It is pretty good. Um, constantly spamming that out. It's really frustrating to play against. Ends up doing 420 damage and you come in get the last couple hits on those creeps as well after the fact. Buyback status worth noting, we don't have it on three heroes for the Radiant, although Clockwork is about to finish his off. Meanwhile, everybody but the Wind Ranger has it on NIP. So Aegis, everything, it, you, you gotta go. You still have, what is this? It's gonna be about uh, three minutes left of, of the Aegis before it ends up expiring. Who has the cheese? Trixie does. So. I'm just making sure that someone has it. You know? All right, here we go. Movement in. Era is on the front line. They're hitting the tower. There's going to be the disarm, though. No longer hitting the tower. And Lycan stuck on the wrong side of that. And actually, Insania is going to end up dropping. They find that kill without Troll Warlord. Thinking about going into this. There's the Ghost Scepter keeping alive that Disruptor. But he will end up going down. Mjolnir pops a bound. Era is trying to go down, trying to kill off this Troll Warlord. Are they going to be able to do it? Yes, they will. The Abyssal Blade comes out, and that ensures the kill. But now 3-3 onto the Monkey King. Sunstrike finds that one as well. Kaiser, mega kill streak. The tornado comes through Milan, trying to bring them all down. Is it going to be enough? Ember Spirit is hexed up. Can they kill him off? Yes, it is going to be the Aegis down as well. So three are dead right now for NIP. They high five back on the Monkey King if they want to use it. He's actually going to jump in front of all these guys. You have another hex in the second as well. Ember Spirit, what have you done? They have the hex to throw it out, but the BKB comes out in time. And now Milan in trouble outside the base. Fisher is still there. Could throw it out if he wants to. They're waiting for the moment. They find the kill. Actually able to dodge away from the clips with that jet light of fist as well. And now they end up buying back on the Invoker as well as the troll. They need some way to control out Era. It's not gonna happen. Great play from Foxy, saving the day right there. Garter getting the bashes in on the Legion Commander. It might finally be enough. Hookshot a little bit off the mark. Have they been able to catch Foxy? He cancels his TP. What? <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know. And, and, I, did, I didn't. Uh, I didn't catch. I didn't catch that. I stopped looking because I thought, okay, he's fine. I stopped looking, but. Trixie managed to get the entire top lane of Brax gone. While they're all fighting bot lane, there's all this chaos and havoc going on at this bottom tier three with people diving in. Insania getting caught, troll running past his teammates to find pickoffs. Uh, like three deafening blasts to try and defend high ground. Trixie just like very, very calmly taking a full lane of Brax because PB yeah. could not disengage. But that, that sleight of fist dodged on the glimpse. That was ridiculous for good. Boxy showing why he has been brought in here as a stand in. He is an, he is an amazing player. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Um, incredibly strong and he's... Again, I don't know if it's going to end up lasting any longer than this. Uh, we were talking about earlier that Mickey is uh, taking today off because they have some exams or something for his school. So um, instead playing with the standard of boxing, he's been performing. There's been moments where it's been a little bit, you know, either over exuberant or getting picked off. And certainly that, uh, that canceled TP is a head scratcher. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still, you know, one lane of racks to one lane of racks. It's a 32,000 net worth lead, but it doesn't feel like the game is <laughs> in the bag. And I don't it, know. It does not feel like a 33,000 net worth lead, honestly. This no. is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I don't think Boxy has made any like egregious individual mistakes apart from maybe that TP cancel, but I didn't catch it. Everything has been very crisp from him. The only kind of errors are, you know, not being on the same page as his team or not understanding when he should go in or go out uh, in team fights. But apart from that, he has been spectacular. But PD, how they are still in this game is starting to boggle my mind. Kaiser yeah. on this Invoker has had an exceptional run in this game, but Troll? Incoming. Not the best scaling hero. He's very good at hitting buildings. He's very tanky. But you look at the supporting cast, Disruptor and Earthshaker, 
Okay, Disruptor can scale decently when he has items, but this guy has no items. Yeah. They're just playing their draft so perfectly, even if they are, you know, undermanned and the enemy are heavy-handed, they're still finding little weaknesses here. The, the big issue is, though, that they are getting wrapped around very, very heavily by NIP at this moment in time. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is that the buyback status, it's not there. This could be the game-deciding one. If if ninjas in pajamas find a kill, it doesn't matter if they haven't been able to push high ground in forever. If they get this, it's all over. Boundless strike going forward. Trixie is here as well. They're looking for 3-3. There's a dire scan. Fine to find these guys. They're going to run into 3-3 first. Milan is there. Does he get it? That goes slam. He's found both of them. They're all going to drop. Stunned up. Killed off. Taken down. Pro Dota end up turning this one back around in spite of the wraparound. Kaiser pops the refresher. PKP hex down as well. Definitely blast out. Monkey King killed off. And so too is going to be this Legion Commander. It's all gone wrong for ninjas in pajamas. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. The Invis from Milan. MVP putting it on his back. The whole damn team. I cannot believe what I have just witnessed, Lyrical. That is the <laughs> single, the single most insane, like, game flipping team fight winning opportunities that has ever happened. The two tankiest, mo most farmed heroes on NIP standing next to each other with an earth shaker in between them in this. It, it, it just does not get better than that. That sets up for a Hex, for a Meatball, for Deafening Blast, for Cold Snap. It means that Trixie can't come in and duel anyone because they don't see them. NIP do not know where these spells are coming from. All they know is that they've just been echo slammed into the fucking gutter by an Earthshaker of Milan and that there are spells <laughs> flying at them from fog. No, seriously. Like, you're in this position, yeah. right? You're, you're standing there. You get hit by an echo slam. You're like, well, shit. Earthshaker's found us. What's going to happen? We're going to get Sunstrike or something, right? No. There are four other heroes all standing around and laying into you. Yeah. God, I can't believe that that just happened in that fashion. And we're just talking about how big the net worth is. Look at this thing. It's, it basically cut it in half. And experience as well. Um, Item-wise, this is going to solve some of those problems that we were talking about before. Disruptor has an Aghanim Scepter on the Courier coming out to him after that fight. Like, uh. I, and uh, Earthshaker is going back for an, a Refresher Orb. Yo. Yo, have oh. you seen how much gold 3-3 has? He has a full hex, I think, if he wants to buy it now. Oh, wow. Wow, he's wow, 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 wow. I think, I think he's going to go buy hex. Like, you use your Midas and then maybe sell it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, that, that wraparound looks so good. And it was that moment for NIP where, like, if you find those pickoffs, it ends up going. But... If, in the duration of just the, you know, five seconds of the Glimmer Cape. It was the perfect five seconds. They get all of those kills and just, oh, if NIP lose because of that, it is, oh no. And now they found the Ember Spirit a little bit off the mark with Fissure. Back on out. My jaw, my jaw is still on my table, you know? I'm just, <laughs> like, I'm still running that secret. Yeah. The other thing, I didn't mention it, but Lycan brought back. Lycan brought back to try and continue that fight. So his buyback is on cooldown for four minutes. Yeah. Troll and Invoker, they come off cooldown in 30 seconds. Well, 67 minutes into this one and they want to take advantage of this timing. They obviously know that this is the case, that these buybacks are about to come off cooldown. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, man. Smoke on smoke action in the late game. It's like oh, yeah. full text, full tilt text pro for a catch there immediately. On to Insania, they break as well. BKB pops, Sunstrike there. That's a kill, starting it off right. She buys back immediately into this fight. Now you have Ember trying to find this. They've used the Ag Static Storm though already on Disruptor. They thought they were in the Roach Pit. And that stops the engagement right there. 
Uh, Gem's still on the ground. They're thinking about a Milan Glimmer Cave. There's Foxy. Do they end up finding it? The hook shot ends immediately. Definitely blasts out as well, but the BKB's already been popped for Kaiser. Pops a second one. It's not quite enough damage. They're controlling up and trying to kill off this Wind Ranger. He's dive after they go down. But more importantly, they end up losing Hani. No Wooks Kong's command. The oh, Meteor comes down as well. A double kill for Garter. Big bad out of control and no detection for the Glimmer Cave. Garter is out of there. Trixie now gonna be brought down potentially. Is Invoker gonna get out? He gets alive on 200 HP. Milan able to get a little bit more separation, but the overwhelming odds will find that kill. They're buying back though. Garter is still there. Trixie can't bring down Garter. They just don't have the capability to do it. Now he's caught right here. The Warlord, Troll Warlord, finding another kill. Buybacks have all been but extended. They bought back on Hani before too late. Now also too, the Legion Commander's coming back in. That's another buyback from the Invoker. They need to keep this fight going. Hani almost dead. This will be a dieback for him, but he's going to be able to do it. No, the Thunderstrike. It's enough to take him down. They find that kill. Now the Static Storm. Let's come back off cooldown. The Cogs actually pull Boxy away from it. He's not going to enjoy it. A triple kill. He comes out because he's of the new of the rock. He's going to be able to stay alive through this. No, finally, I think that he is going to be brought down by that tornado. Oh the Cogs God. kept him out of the Static Storm, but now, finally, Pro That's Dota, it. take them all down. Game over. That's that's freaking game. Okay, so Kaiser is an insanely godlike invoker when it comes to late game, apparently. His refresh and the deafening blast, the double hexes he got, but also the Octarine Core, healing him up back to like half HP when the Ember Spirit tried to initiate on him like two or three times. Kept himself alive through Alacrity, Cold Snap. Every cycle of his spells was almost perfect, almost spot on. But dear Lord, NIP, they have some serious, serious complex or syndrome about ending games or breaking high ground because that's two in a row now where they've had leads, they've had opportunities to finish and end, but they just haven't been able to take them.